And now the scene from Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix in Chapter 21, where Professor Umbridge is inspecting Hagrid's lesson. All right, now, uh, who can tell me why uh, some of you can see them and some can't? Hermione raised her hand. Uh, go on, then, Hagrid beamed at her. The only people who can see Thestrals are people who have seen death. That's exactly right, said Hagrid solemnly. Ten points for Gryffindor. No, Thestrals. Him, him. Professor Umbridge had arrived. She was standing a few feet away from Harry, wearing her green hat and cloak again, her clipboard at the ready. Hagrid, who had never heard Umbridge's fake cough before, was gazing in some concern at the closest Thestral, evidently under the impression that it had made the sound. Him! Him! Oh, hello, Hagrid said, smiling, having located the source of the noise. You received the note I sent to your cabin this morning, said Umbridge in the same loud, slow voice she had just used with him earlier, as though she was addressing somebody both foreign and very slow. Telling you that I would be inspecting your lesson? Oh, yeah, said Hagrid brightly. Glad you found the place all right. Uh, as you can see, uh, I don't know, can you? Uh, we're doing Thestrals today. And... I'm sorry, said Umbridge loudly, cupping her hand around her ear and frowning. What did you say? Hagrid looked a little confused. Oh, uh, Thestrals, he said loudly. Big uh, winged horses, you know. He flapped his gigantic arms, hopefully. Professor Umbridge raised her eyebrows at him and muttered as she made a note on her clipboard. "'has to resort to cruel shine language.' "'Well, uh, anyway,' said Hagrid, turning back to the class and looking slightly flustered, "'um, uh, what was I saying?' "'Appears to have short-term memory problems,' muttered Umbridge, loudly enough for everyone to hear her. Draco Malfoy looked as though Christmas had come a month early. Hermione, on the other hand, had turned scarlet with a suppressed rage. "'Oh, yeah!' said Hagrid, throwing an uneasy glance at Umbridge's clipboard, but plowing on valiantly. Uh, yeah, I was going to tell you how come we got a herd. Yeah. So uh, we started off with a male and five females. Uh, this one, he patted the first horse to have appeared, named a tenebrous, he's my special favorite, first one born here in the forest. Are you aware, said Umbridge loudly, interrupting him, that the Ministry of Magic has classified Thestrals as dangerous? Harry's heart sank like a stone, but Hagrid merely chuckled. <laughs> oh, Thestrals aren't dangerous. So, all right, they might make uh, take a bite out of you if they really uh, get annoyed. Shows signs of pleasure at the idea of violence, muttered Umbridge, scrambling on her clipboard again. No, come on, said Hagrid, looking a little anxious now. I mean, uh, a dog will bite you if you bait it, won't it? But Thestrals have just got a bad reputation because of the, the death thing. People used to think there were... Bad omens, didn't they? Just didn't understand, did they? Umbridge did not answer. She finished writing her last note, then looked up at Hagrid, and said again very loudly and slowly, Please continue teaching as usual. I am going to walk. She mimed walking. Malfoy and Pansy Parkinson were having silent fits of laughter. Among the students... She pointed around at individual members of the class. And ask them questions. She pointed at her mouth to indicate talking. Hagrid stared at her, clearly at a complete loss to understand why she was acting as though he didn't understand normal English. Hermione had tears of fury in her eyes now. You hag! You evil hag! She whispered as Umbridge walked toward Pansy Parkinson. I know what you're doing, you awful, twisted, vicious! Uh... Anyway, said Hagrid, clearly struggling to regain the flow of his lesson. So, uh, Thestrals, yeah, well, uh, there's lots of good stuff about them. Do you find, said Professor Umbridge in a ringing voice to Pansy Parkinson, that you are able to understand Professor Hagrid when he talks? Just like Hermione, Pansy had tears in her eyes, but these were tears of laughter. Indeed, her answer was almost incoherent because she was trying to suppress her giggles. <laughs> no, because, well... It sounds like grunting a lot of the time, Umbridge scribbled on her clipboard. The few unbruised bits of Hagrid's face flushed, but he tried to act as though he had not heard Pansy's answer. Ah, uh, yeah, good stuff, Balthestrals. Well, once they're tamed like this lot, you'll never be lost again. Amazing senses of direction. Just tell them where you want to go. 
Assuming they can understand you, of course, said Malfoy loudly, and Pansy Parkinson collapsed in a fit of renewed giggles. Professor Umbridge smiled indulgently at them, and then turned to Neville. You can see the Thestrals, Longbottom, can you? Neville nodded. Whom did you see die? she asked, her tone indifferent. My, my granddad. And what do you think of them? she said, waving her stubby hand at the horses, who by now had stripped a great deal of the carcass down to the bone. Um, <laughs> Neville glanced nervously at Hagrid. Well, they're, they're okay. Students are too intimidated to admit they are frightened muttered Umbridge, making another note on her clipboard. No, said Neville, looking upset. No, I, I'm not scared of them. It's quite all right, said Umbridge, patting Neville on the shoulder with what she evidently intended to be an understanding smile, though it looked more like a leer to Harry. Well, Hagrid, she turned to look up at him again, speaking once more in that loud, slow voice, I think I've got enough to be getting along with. You'll receive... She mimed, taking something from the air in front of her. The result of your inspection, she pointed at the clipboard, in ten days' time. She held up ten stubby little fingers. Then her smile, wider and more toad-like than ever before beneath her green hat. She bustled from their midst, leaving Malfoy and Pansy Parkinson in fits of laughter, Hermione actually shaking with fury, and Neville looking confused and upset.' 